Hello fellow modelers, in this video I'm going to build this lovely US Army tank transporter in small 72 scale. Actually it is not so tiny, only the box is one of the largest in my collection. The manual is almost like a book with a lot of steps, but do not worry, that is because the kit contains three separate models. Sometimes it is hard to choose which color scheme to build, but in this case you have only two. In the kit is a 10 large plastic spruce with a cute and small parts, and there are a lot of them. But as usual, an extraordinary are plastic parts made from complex molds. I would like to see a factory machinery for this part. Anyway, there is a lot of work, so let's start with model assembly. As usual, I must cut out plastic parts from the sprue, but that is not all. It is essential to remove the rest of the plastic with a soft sandpaper. However, there is even more work. Each part has more or less bronze mold lines. I use sharp hobby knife for more complex shapes, but nail files are also handy. Here is the difference for comparison. I use for gluing plastic usually two types of adhesives. One is extra thin with a small brush. The glue evaporates on air fast, so you apply it to the bond between two plastic pieces and that is all. Then is the second one, which is Revel Contacta. It has dense consistency and you simply apply it on the plastic part with a toothpick and place the other plastic part afterward. So it's a suitable for small pieces. Or you can use super glue instead. The new kits are very accurate and you don't need party, mostly. However, you can try to fill the minor seam lines with a primer and then smooth it with a nail file. At this moment, I realized that the model would need some minor adjustments and there will be a lot of them. So first, I will add wire rope. You can probably buy some ropes in scale, but it is simple to make them yourself. So you will need four copper wires. In the next step, you will need to fix one of the end of the wires somehow. I used, in my case, toothpick. Then you will fix the second side of a bundle of wires into a cordless drill. Try to have all four wires of the same length and strength, because if even one cable is a little bit longer than others, the final structure will be inconsistent. Finally, turn on the drill to low RPM and you can enjoy the satisfying moment. I like this work so much that I made a few meters for my future models. I drilled a small hole to plastic because then you can reel the rope more comfortable. And in the end you will need to fix the position of the rope with a... wait for it... it's a bird, it's a plane, it is super glue! <laughs> I do not like this plastic part, so I am removing it and I will make a new one and more accurate. In the kit is a small photo edge set with windshield wipers and protection mesh for winch operator. However, I need it for my modifications a similar one. Luckily, a dart company is making a large photo edge sheet with a soft mesh. So I cut out small pieces with ordinary scissors and glue it on the model with a super glue. I also removed canister, or box holder, or whatever it was. So now I'm creating a new one from plastic profiles. You can simply cut out tiny strips from 0.2mm thick plastic board. And again for comparison part from the kit and new one. However, I made this modification primarily because I wanted to make the winch more visible. So that is all for this section. Now let's make the truck interior. I decided to make the doors open, so I recommend to modify seats just a little bit. And the kit are too much monolithic. Actually, I will realize that circular holes should be rectangular. Thus I will cut out the bottom side and replace it with a plastic board. Also, lovely detail is if you will drill out lifting eyes. I use 0.4mm drill bits 
and Proxon Micro Mode with a modified RPM. When I begin making modifications, it is hard to stop me. I agree that sometimes it is a little bit overkill for the scale. In any case, you don't need to follow all the steps if you will decide to build the same model. I created internal construction from plastic profiles and oxygen hoses because the modern army vehicles usually have a protection against chemicals. I already used copper, plastic, but another useful material is lead, especially thin lead strips or wires which you can easily bend to desired shapes. You can probably buy this material in fishing supply store. This is useful technique if you need the wire with a ball. I am melting down the end of a copper wire. The temperature of a lighter is higher than from the candle flame, thus it is easier and faster. And maybe you are asking yourself, what is practical use? You can make from it shift lever or other levers under the steering wheel, for example. So I think the model has now a few details, therefore I can start painting. I do not have a good experiences with a masking liquid, but this time the surface isn't flat, thus I can apply a thicker layer. So I guess it will be ok. I am unifying surface with a primer. The model has some metal parts, so the color adhere to the surface better. I decided to paint tricky NATO camouflage marking because... Honestly, I think it will be more informative for you than the whole track in Desert Yellow. I use new, aka real colors, which have a precise shades, but I think for models in 72 scale a little bit darker that I need. However, it doesn't matter too much if we will paint highlights and shading. As you can see, the camouflage pattern is not the easiest, and it requires a lot of masking. I don't want to waste meters of masking tape and plenty of time. Therefore I found a better solution. I resize the image from a manual and I will use it as a template for spraying. I save the template to PDF and make it available for download. You can find the link in the video description with a photo documentation for all details and weathering. Anyway, I cut out green pieces from the puzzle and stuck underneath thin snakes from cell adhesive rubber. 
and that is because I want to achieve a smooth transition between each color shade. However, not as much as with a freehand airbrush spraying. The second shade is NATO Brown. I recommend spraying the second layer with a low pressure of 15 psi and denser dilution because you will prevent spilling paint under the mask. And when the color is dry, I cover brown areas and gaps with masking liquid. If the gap is more significant, you can use masking tape instead. So the final shade is NATO Black. I mix this color with dark gray because I want it a little bit lighter. Now it only remains to remove masks. However, some cell adhesive gum stayed on the model. Do not use any sharp tools or liquids. Just make a small ball from the gum and push it on the model. The residual rubber will nicely stick on the large one. Bloody hell, I do not use any magnifying glass when I am making models, but I will probably start. I overlooked this ugly mold line on the engine cover. I had with the masking so much fun, but now I am thrilled to repeat the whole process again, hopefully for the last time. Yes, this is better. Now I'm painting a lot of small parts and details which I made before. I use Vallejo, Revel Aqua and Citadel acrylic colors. These types of colors are odorless and not toxic. I have for painting different brushes, but I recently purchased for small 72 scale figures new professional artistic paintbrushes made by Da Vinci and Vincent Newton. They have natural fibers and nicely holding sharp shapes. So also handy for painting small details on the dashboard. The paint job is finished, so now I'm spraying clear lacquer varnish. It will protect the color against the weathering chemicals. Now I'm trying to paint highlights with the oil paints, because the surface looks very uniform. The oil paints usually drying two days. Thus, it is easy to blur color as you want. You don't need any thinner, just a dry brush. The opposite to highlights is shading. It makes details optically more pronounced. In my case, I use dark brown enamel pan liner, which is highly diluted color. If you want to blend or wipe it off, you need odorless or enamel thinner. I continue with oils. Some highlights disappeared after wash, so I'm easily repaint them. I am sometimes making models very colorful and non-realistic because it is fun. But this time I try to not overdone shading. However, it will be heavily weathered. I painted the model with acrylic lacquer colors, which are resilient, so now I can use any enamel product as I want without worries about the previous paint job. I am spraying accumulated dust primarily around chassis. You can use Tamiya, Humbrol or Revel paints, it doesn't matter too much. The 
the dust effect looks nice, but I can make it less uniform with a thinner. This way you can paint lovely stains, leaks or simply accumulated dust around details. And primarily the desert dust will make the whole model optically lighter. Now I'm glad that I chose the NATO camouflage pattern, because the dust created delightful color contrast. It is the same as a winter weather camouflage. For example, white on the Soviet green is always the sureness of a good looking model. Indicate are wheels from black rubber, but if you want to make the model dirty, you need to paint even these parts. I am painting the tire pattern with an acrylic color. It will be nicely pronounced like on some happy dusty road. I let the oil and enamel colors dry out, and meanwhile I will add and make the rest of details. I drill out plastic front lights, because the transparent ones are always better. I am using for chrome base Model Master paint. If you want a similar chrome finish, you can also use Molotov chrome markers. The transparent cover glass I am making from two component clear epoxy party. I am imitating reflectors on fenders with a transparent orange color. Essential is to paint the base with a chrome or a silver color. I remove plastic beacon because I want to create a new one and from clear transparent plastic. It is simple. I attach residual clear plastic sprue into micro drill and mill new part with a sharp hobby blade. I use for rear view mirrors cell adhesive wall chrome sticker. What a frown face. Sorry paper. So a few more details are done. Now the more weathering. I am painting more leaks and rust with oil paints. I look at the model next day and realized that the wheels are too much clean. I mean, if you compare it with the rest of the model. Thus I am painting happy sunny beams. And then I will unify them and make them less pronounced with a thinner.
Okay, the final weathering technique is splashing. You only need a highly diluted color, large brush and toothpick. Or for more significant effect, you can try to blow out the color from fibers with an airbrush. A relatively new company, T-Model, recently released a few beautiful kits, but also modern accessories in 72 scale. So the bottles, canisters and boxes will be cherry on the cake. I am painting water bottles with a transparent color, because I want to change the final shade, but preserve transparency. And two tiny Coca-Cola bottles, of course. The last but not least detail, I cannot forget, add one of the best and easy made details which you can add to this model. And that is... Truck air brake hoses! <laughs> I hope you share my enthusiasm. I simply reel copper wire to a large metal rod. This way I will get a nice spring which I only paint for red and blue color. I really like the mirror reflection. And special thanks to Model Emporium eShop for supporting kit and tools for this video. And do not forget at 10% discount with a code PLASMO10. So that is all, I hope you liked the result just a little bit and sorry that I didn't show you the trailer and bulldozer in this video. But do not worry, the trailer is almost finished and I made a lot of improvements again. Therefore I decided to make a separate video even if a lot of steps will be similar to this model. But I guess repetition is the mother of wisdom. So here is a final presentation of the finished model. Thank you for watching and see you next time.